There is a transition for you. Where will you find another like it in the Western Hemisphere? And some of us have swept around snow-walled curves of the Pacific Railroad in that vicinity, 6,000 feet above the sea, and looked down as the birds do upon the deathless summer of the Sacramento Valley with its fruitful fields, its feathery foliage, its silver streams, all slumbering in the mellow haze of its enchanted atmosphere and all infinitely softened and spiritualized by distance. A dreamy, exquisite glimpse of fairyland made all the more charming and striking that it was caught through a forbidding gateway of ice and snow and savage crags and precipices. Chapter 57 California Novelty of Seeing a Woman well, if it ain't a child, $150 for a kiss, waiting for a turn. It was in this Sacramento Valley, just referred to, that a deal of the most lucrative of the early gold mining was done, and you may still see in places its grassy slopes and levels torn and guttered and disfigured by the avaricious spoilers of 15 and 20 years ago. You may see such disfigurements far and wide over California, and in some such places where only meadows and forests are visible. Not a living creature, not a house, no stick or stone or remnant of a ruin, and not a sound, not even a whisper to disturb the Sabbath stillness. You will find it hard to believe that there stood at one time a fiercely flourishing little city of 2,000 or 3,000 souls with its newspaper, fire company, brass band, volunteer militia, bank, hotels, noisy Fourth of July processions and speeches, speeches, gambling hells crammed with tobacco smoke, profanity and rough bearded men of all nations and colors, with tables heaped with gold dust sufficient for the revenues of a German principality, street crowded and rife with business. Town lots worth $400 a front foot. Labor, laughter, music, dancing, swearing, fighting, shooting, stabbing. A bloody inquest and a man for breakfast every morning. Everything that delights and adorns existence. All the appointments and apparentances of a thriving and prosperous and promising young city. And now, nothing is left of it all but a lifeless, homeless solitude. The men are gone. The houses have vanished. Even the name of the place is forgotten. In no other land in modern times have towns so absolutely died and disappeared as in the old mining regions of California. It was a driving, vigorous, restless population in those days. It was a curious population. It was the only population of the kind that the world has ever seen gathered together, and it is not likely that the world will ever see its like again. For, observe, it was an assemblage of 200,000 young men, not simpering, dainty, kid-gloved weaklings, but stalwart, muscular, dauntless young braves, brimful of push and energy, and royally endowed with every attribute that goes to, makes up, to make up a peerless and magnificent manhood, the very pick and choice of the world's glorious ones. No women, no children, no gray and stooping veterans, none but erect, bright-eyed, quick-moving, strong-handed young giants. The strangest population, the finest population, the most gallant host that ever trooped down the startled solitudes of an unpeopled land. And where are they now? Scattered to the ends of the earth, or per prematurely aged and decrepit, or shot or stabbed in street affrays, or dead of disappointed hopes and broken hearts, all gone, or nearly all. Victims devoted upon the altar of the golden calf, the noblest holocaust that ever waked its sacrificial incense heavenward, 
It is pitiful to think upon. It was a splendid population, for all the slow, sleepy, sluggish-brained sloths stayed at home. You never find that sort of people among pioneers. You cannot build pioneers out of that sort of material. It was that population that gave to California a name for getting up astounding enterprises and rushing them through with a magnificent dash and daring and a recklessness of cost or consequences, which she bears unto this day. And when she projects a new surprise, the grave world smiles as usual and says, well, that is California all over. But they were rough in those times. They fairly reveled in gold, whiskey, fights, and fandangos, and were unspeakably happy. The honest miner ranked from a hundred to a thousand dollars out of his claim a day, and what with the gambling dens and the other entertainments, he hadn't a cent the next morning, if he had any sort of luck. They cooked their own bacon and beans, sewed on their own buttons, washed their own shirts, blue woolen ones, and if a man wanted to fight on his hands without any annoying delay, all he had to do was to appear in public in a white shirt or a stovepipe hat, and he would be accommodated. For those people hated the aristocrats. They had a particular and malignant animosity toward what they called a biled shirt. It was a wild, free, disorderly, grotesque society. Men, only swarming hosts of stalwart men, nothing juvenile, nothing feminine visible anywhere. In those days, miners would flock in crowds to catch a glimpse of that rare and blessed spectacle, a woman. Old inhabitants tell how in a certain camp the news went abroad early in the morning that a woman was come. They had seen a calico dress hanging out of a wagon down at the camping ground, sign of immigrants from over the Great Plains. Everybody went down there, and a shout went up when an actual bona fide dress was discovered fluttering in the wind. The male immigrant was visible. The miner said, Fetch her out. He said, It's my wife, gentlemen. She is sick. We have been robbed of money, provisions, everything by the Indians. We want to rest. Fetch her out. We've got to see her. But gentlemen, the poor thing, she... Fetch her out! He fetched her out, and they swung their hats and sent up three rousing cheers and a tiger. And they crowded around and gazed at her and touched her dress and listened to her voice with a look of men who listened to a memory rather than a present reality. And then they collected $2,500 in gold and gave it to the man and swung their hats again and gave three more cheers and went home satisfied. Once I dined in San Francisco with the family of a pioneer and talked with his daughter, a young lady whose first experience in San Francisco was an adventure, though she herself did not remember it, as she was only two or three years old at, the t at that time. Her father said that after landing from the ship, they were walking up the street, a servant leading the party with the little girl in her arms, and presently a huge miner, bearded, belted, spurred, and bristling with deadly weapons, just down from a long campaign in the mountains, evidently, barred the way, stopped the servant, and stood gazing, with a face all alive with gratification and astonishment. astonishment. Then he said reverently, well, if it ain't a child. And then he snatched a little leather sack out of his pocket and said to the servant, There's a hundred and fifty dollars in dust there, and I'll give it to you to let me kiss the child. The anecdote is true. But see how things change? Sitting at that dinner table listening to that anecdote, if I had offered double the money for the privilege of kissing the same child, I would have been refused. Seventeen added years have far more than doubled the price. And while upon this subject I will remark that once in Star City in the Humboldt Mountains, I took my place in a sort of long post office single file of miners to patiently await my chance to peep through a crack in the cabin and get a sight of the splendid new sensation, 
a genuine live woman and at the end of half an hour my turn came and I put my eye in the crack and there she was with one arm akimbo and tossing flapjacks in a frying pan with the other and she was 165 years old and hadn't a tooth in her head being in a being in calmer mood now I voluntarily knock off a hundred from that MT Chapter 58 Life in San Francisco Worthless Stocks My First Earthquake Reportorial Instincts Effects of the Shocks Incidents and Curiosities Sabbath Breakers The Lodger and the Chambermaid A Sensible Fashion to Follow